Hey, folks, I'm so glad that you're here. Hopefully you're having a wonderful day. Had a great week since the last time we spoke or however long it's been since the last time we spoke. I don't know. Uh, what we're going to talk about today are, uh, I'm going to call them dishonest ingredients. Because what happens is in marketing, we can put a name on something and you read it and you go, oh, that sounds okay. Uh, and so you eat it, and I've been duped too. Everyone's been duped until you find out what it really is. And you know, I'll, I'll cover this a little later. But like natural flavoring, natural flavoring can be anything. Natural flavoring could be monosodium glutamate. It could be natural flavoring. It could be uh, I'm going to cover this one later. Uh, beaver anal gland secretion. No kidding. And I'm going to cover that in a second as to where that is. You want to know where that is because you don't want to be eating that stuff. But many times it's just listed as natural flavoring. So that's one of the deceptive toxins that you might find in your uh, household products and in your personal care products. I want you to understand what you're doing because a lot of times patients come to our offices. I've been in practice now 33 years. And patients come into our offices and they have problems and we, you know, we're chiropractors. We give them chiropractic care. We give them nutritional work. We work on a digestive system for acid reflux and heartburn. And then we find out that they're doing something every day that, of course, we're not privy to. And we realize that's where that problem's coming from. So I want you to start thinking, gosh, if I do this, maybe that's the cause of my health care problems. Many times it is. Some obvious ones are like perfume, which we'll talk about too today, um, but there's a lot more uh, sinister ones, if I may. So a lot of listeners say to me and my patients too, they say, why didn't somebody tell me this sooner? Pretty much every time I do a radio show, every time I do a lecture, every time I see patients, somebody eventually is going to say, why didn't somebody tell me this sooner? Why didn't somebody tell me that my headaches were coming from a pinched nerve in my neck? Because we've been treating the symptoms for years and it never went away. And once we fixed the pinched nerve, the headaches went away. Or why didn't somebody tell me that my digestive problems were caused by a pinched nerve in my low back, which controls my colon? And my answer inevitably is, I don't know. I don't know why somebody didn't tell you this. And, and sometimes people get mad at their other doctors. And I was like, listen, the, the doctor may not know. The doctor may be working in, a, in certain parameters that on, only cover certain things, and they don't look outside, you know, the traditional outside the box. And that's what's so cool about the work we do in our offices and on the shows and in my lectures is that we really do think outside the box. What else could be going on? And that's why so many patients say, why didn't somebody tell me this? And then why didn't I do this sooner? So hopefully you won't be one of those people. So if you're just learning about toxic chemicals and consumer goods for the first time, you might be frustrated. You might be saying to yourself, wow, I had no idea that the deodorant I was wearing was causing my sinus problems. Well, yeah, it could be. So let's go through a couple of ingredients that are hidden in foods and in personal care products. And so you can maybe start making your own diagnosis. I'd love to educate you enough that you can make your own diagnosis on a lot of these problems. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you need my help. But you may be able to help me out here too. Something called SLS or PEG. SLS is sodium lauryl sulfate, and PEG is polyethylene glycol. Now, these are used in things like kid shampoos, baby bubble bath, regular shampoos, soaps, shower gels. And if you go home today, and a lot of people do this after workshops like this, they'll go home and look in their bathroom and pull out their shower gel or their soap and go, look at this. It has sodium lauryl sulfate in it or laureth sulfate. Wow. And sometimes they'll sneak it in and say, what's from coconuts? You know, source is coconut. Well, it doesn't make it any better. It's still a perverted form of the coconut. And so sodium lauryl sulfate uh, and, and their polyethylene glycol are sudsing agents. So what that means is they make things soapy. Now, if you use real soap, um, I use something called Castile soap, which is a, a oil with some, fra with some natural uh, essential oils in it, and it doesn't suds. I rub it on, scrub up, rinse off, done. No suds. How can this stuff work? Well, in chemistry, if I take you back to chemistry class, likes dissolve likes. So oil will dissolve oil. Water doesn't dissolve oil. So if you use an oil in your oil-based soap with some essential oils or not, essential oils just give it a little fragrance. Uh, they may act as an antiseptic too if you use something like tea tree. It dissolves the dirt and it washes off so easily. And it amazes me. When I go somewhere, let's say I'm visiting or something, I didn't bring my Castile soap with me, and I have to use commercial soap, how I just have to stand there, and it seems like forever to wash this, this gooky, slimy stuff off my body. So the natural wor stuff works, usually in this case, much better than the commercial stuff. So why is it a problem? Why is sodium lauryl sulfate and polyethylene glycol a problem? 
where these chemicals are manufactured, they release a toxic byproduct called 1,4-dioxane. Now, this chemical easily penetrates into your skin, and it may cause cancer and birth defects. It may also be toxic to your kidneys, your nervous system, and your respiratory system. I'm a chiropractor. My job is get your nervous system working the best it possibly can. So if you're, if you're getting the best chiropractic care in the world, whether it's from us or someone else, I hope you're getting chiropractic care. I think everyone should. But then you're doing things like toxic chemicals that affect the nervous system. You're fighting us. So stop fighting us. Work with us, not against us. You'll save money. You'll save time. You'll save health. Maybe years to your life added on. So I want you to understand, I don't want you fighting us. I want you to work with us. So if you're doing things that can adversely affect your nervous system, something easy as simple as sodium lauryl sulfate or polyethylene glycol, you're not getting 100% of the benefits that you could from being one of our patients. Other chemicals, let's keep going on. We got a lot to cover today. I doubt I'll even get to all of them. Phthalates. Now, phthalates is anything that lists the word fragrance on a label, such as nail polish, also vinyl flooring, windows, plastics. Phthalates are chemicals. Uh, they're, they're plasticizers. They make everything from nail polish uh, to uh, plastic stronger, and it makes it more flexible. And it may even be found in your personal care products and air fresheners and makes them smell good. So perfumes, hairsprays, deodorants, air fresheners, carpet cleaners, anything that has a fake smell to it. You ever walk through a store or through a mall and you walk past the, the candle shop? Oh, my gosh. All those toxic chemicals just flowing out and into your lungs. Now, phthalates typically turn up in things like polyvinyl, polyvinyl chloride, plastics, PVC pipes, including things like shower curtains, vinyl shower curtains. You ever unwrap a shower curtain? It smells like plastic, new car smell. These are the phthalates, the plasticizers. Now, why is it bad? 20 years of research suggests that phthalates can mess with your hormones and damage your reproductive health. That alone gets everyone's attention. What? What? Mess my reproductive abilities? I don't want that. So it's especially critical for people, women that are pregnant, babies, young children, people, older people with weak immune systems. You just got to stay clear of it. So it drives me insane when I, I remember going into a daycare center once and they had those things that you plug into the wall that's rated fragrance and they were trying to cover up the smell of kids. Kids stink. Let's call it what it is. But what we're doing is we're affecting these little child's hormones and you, you the parents, just by being in the room with them. Now, there are options. The options are you could use something like essential oils. Essential oils are non as long as they're natural, real, pure essential oils, they're non-toxic, and you can use them now. The problem is they're more expensive. To me, it's worth it. I don't want my body, my family, my friends, children around me getting sick or affecting their hormones because I wanted my room to smell like pine trees. So you got to start thinking a little bit about this or nothing at all. You can always clean. That's an always another option to get the smell out of the house. That's another option is keep things clean. But there are alternatives. You can purchase uh, fragrance-free cleaning supplies. All the uh, dish soap I use, all the clothes soap I use, always fragrance-free, natural, non-toxic. Because when you wash your clothes in toxic chemicals or fragrances, you know, fresh spring smell, smells like lilacs. You're putting that in your clothes. Your clothes touch your body, and your skin is a sponge. So anything that comes in contact with your skin is going to be absorbed. So if you put toxic chemicals in your clothes and you put it against your skin, it's going to be absorbed. Now, if it happens one day, chances are it's not going to cause a problem. These are cumulative effects that we have. They build up over time, and that's where the dangers come in. So over time, these toxic chemicals are going to get into the body, and you may not even realize it. Because patients come to me all the time and say, well, Dr. Joe, I have arthritis. Dr. Joe, I have whatever. And I say, well, did anybody ever explain to you where it came from? Well, no. Arthritis is a big one. Of course, as a chiropractor, we see a lot of arthritic patients. And I'll say, Doctor, they'll say, Dr. Joe, I had an MRI, I had x-rays, I had, went to my other doctors, and they told me I have osteoarthritis in my neck, my back, my knee, my foot, my elbow. And I say, do you know why? And they say, 100% of the time, No. No one ever told me why I have it. So then I explain that if bones are out of alignment, they rub up against each other and they wear out. That's called osteoarthritis. 
if your bones or joints are swollen and it's an autoimmune condition, it's rheumatoid arthritis. And then there's other types of arthritis too, psoriatic, things like that. But the osteoarthritis, by far the most common, is the bones are out of alignment rubbing up against each other. So what would make sense? If bones are out of alignment rubbing up against each other, what if we put the bones back in place? <gasps> what a concept. That's chiropractic, putting bones back in place, taking the pressure off the nerve so it helps with pain, but it also does wonders with slowing down, stopping, and hopefully slightly reversing osteoarthritis. Never knew that, did you? Another benefit, one of the many, many benefits of chiropractic. So if you're exposing yourself back to phthalates, to phthalates and chemicals and perfumes and hairsprays and colognes and, 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 and conditioners that have these artificial smells in them, it may lead to hormone disruption might lead to cancer. Now, is it going to cause the cancer? Eh, probably not, but over time, it can become an issue. And so why would you do that to yourself if there's an alternative? That's why I love things like uh, the, the, the global positioning devices that you have on your phone. Why would I go the longest route with the most traffic if I can go a shorter route with less traffic? So why would you go a route that's potentially leading you into a disease state when there's a quicker, easier way to go that's not going to do that? I don't know that answer. Someday, I guess if, I, if that ever happens, I'd be out of a job because everybody would be healthy. But until that time, I want you, my listeners, to not go the longest road or the sickest road in this case. Manicures and pedicures. How about that? You ever walk into a nail salon? I've done that. That stink, that smell, those are a lot of toxic chemicals. And if you put them on your, your nails, it can get into your body. So that's why I'd recommend you use a natural nail polish, natural makeup, and you can go to health food stores. I know those places you've never been. The health food stores, and many times they have the non-toxic makeups there. I did see somebody the other day came to me, and they said, Dr. Joe, look at the ingredients in this lipstick. And it was a lipstick that was supposed to stay on for a long time. And I looked at it, and they had herbs and spices, and I said, man, this looks really good. And then they had one chemical. Gosh, what was it? I can't remember it now. But anyway, it was the one thing that blew everything out of the water. And I thought, why did I even put this in there? Oh, it was parfum. That's right. It was a, it was a perfume. It was, it was a, a phthalate. And, and I thought, why did I even put that in here? Who cares if perfume, if, if lipstick smells nice? Didn't make any sense to me. So this whole, their whole shtick of all natural uh, makeup, I blew it right out of the water with that one chemical. A lot of times these lip glosses that you buy, you know, keep your lips dry for, for chapped lips, um, they'll put uh, alcohol in it. And alcohol dries out your lips. So what do you do? You use more of the product, which is brilliant. It gets you addicted to the product. And so I thought that's brilliant marketing, but not for me because I know better. I'm not going to use something that has alcohol and dry out my lips. All right, so we're talking today about toxic chemicals that you find in your household items and in your personal products. How about TEA or DEA? Concealer, mascara, sunless uh, tanning lotions, conditioners. TEA and DEA are proteins that are used to adjust the pH level of the product to make it more acid or more alkaline, and it's also used as a wetting agent. When TEA is, TEA is combined with certain preservatives, it can create cancer-causing compounds called nitrosamines. So that's the problem is one chemical is okay and the other chemical is okay. When you put them together, they become a problem. So check your product labels and make sure you avoid something that says TEA or DEA. That's not good. So again, as a chiropractor, I'm always trying to make sure that you're as healthy as you possibly can be. And the reason is, A, I care about you and I want you to be well. I want me to be well. It also makes me look good. When you come to our offices, a lot of patients say, well, the other doctors I went to never did this. They never checked my digestive system to see why I had acid reflux. And maybe we can adjust or gently pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, which works great, by the way. We probably see, I'd say about 80% of our patients when tested have this digestive problem. The stomach is spasmed and you get an acid reflux from it, which means you're not digesting your food. You're not absorbing your nutrients. It's affecting your immune system. Had somebody come to me the other day, a doctor, as a matter of fact, and said, Dr. Joe, my sister has an uh, 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 autoimmune condition, uh, multiple chemical sensitivities. And I looked at her and I said, the doctor, and I said, does she have any acid reflux or heartburn? And the doctor said, well, yeah, as a matter of fact, she does. How'd you know that? And I said, well, what's happening is the stomach's job is to take proteins and break them into amino acids. If the proteins aren't being totally broken down, they get absorbed as a, a, essentially a big chunk of protein. 
And when that happens, it can get into the blood system and the immune system attacks these big chunks of protein. That's called an allergy or an allergic reaction. And in the meantime, the immune system starts to become uh, desensitized. So it starts attacking everything around it. And so where something wouldn't normally cause a reaction, now the immune system is just so wired that it starts attacking everything. So many times when you fix the acid reflux of the heart, or you massage or adjust the stomach away from the diaphragm, you start breaking the proteins into amino acids, you stop absorbing these big chunks of protein, calms down the immune system, and everybody's happy, and you're less sensitive to things. So again, as your chiropractor, I want to make sure your nervous system is working, but I want to make sure your digestive system is working and making sure your diet is working properly. So folks, if you have a problem, you'd like to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love the opportunity for you to come see us. So go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we will set you up a time to come see us. Now, the consultation, I'd like to sit down and you have a consultation. If you come into the office, don't come see us if you're not ready to do something. Because every, every now and then a patient will come in, and I'll sit down and spend a lot of time and energy and research and say, okay, this is what I think your problem is, and this is what I'm going to recommend you do. And the patient says, nah, I don't want to do anything. Well, then why'd you come here? Why'd you waste my time, your time, your money? I don't want you to come into the office unless you're serious about wanting to get well. So if you make an appointment, A, make sure you show up because we're going to reserve time for you, and B, make sure you're ready to do something. I, you may not do everything, I say, but be ready to do something. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, car accidents. I've never seen a car damage where the occupants weren't, ever. Stop suffering. Stop sitting on your fanny and saying, I'm going to get around to this. I need to go see you, Dr. Joe, but I'll... stop it. Come see us today. Go to the website right now, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, and you can do it online or give us a call. We accept the people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. We want to get you well and keep you well. So I want to talk more about chemicals that you're finding in, in household products and in personal care products that may be affecting your health. In fact, they are affecting your health at some level. Is it an obvious effect? I don't know that yet. Something called PERC. Now, this is PERC. This is found in most dry cleaning formulas. It's perchloroethylene, and it's a colorless, uh, non-flammable solvent that's used to clean delicate fabrics. You've all walked into the dry cleaners, and you have that smell of dry cleaner. That's usually PERC or perchloroethylene. Now, it off-gases. It gives off uh, gases when it's exposed to air, which means you can breathe it in. Short-term exposure can cause things like dizziness, fatigue, sweating, and headaches. Long-term exposure may cause liver and kidney damage, memory loss, and cancer. And a couple of years ago, I remember doing a report on this, and they found that people that work in dry cleaning business had more uh, of a certain types of diseases that are linked to PERC, chloroethylene. So it's not a good chemical to be exposed to long-term, but also short-term. So how do you, how do you avoid it? Wash your hands. Uh, you, uh, when you touch things like this, if you can wash your clothes, even better still. Some delicate clothes you can hand wash or you can use a gentle cycle on your washing machine instead of dry, clean, dry cleaning. Now, it's also cheaper too. Some things need to be dry cleaned. I get it. I, if I wear a suit, it needs to be dry cleaned. When you do dry cleaning, ask them to take your clothes out of the bag, or you need to, take it out of your bag before you bring it home. And when you take it out of the bag, when you get home, what I do is I hang it up in my garage and I let it air out for a day or two because those chemicals then can disperse. Let your newly dry clean clothes air out. Very important. Put it on the porch. Put it on your garage. And just let that smell go away. That's a little step you can take that can really help your health. And that's what it's all. It's all about little steps here. I had some, one, of, one of my coworkers, actually, I just saw him the other day at the studio. And he says, Dr. Joe, I need to come see you. I said, I know. You've been telling me this for a long time now, David. He goes, I'm afraid of you. I said, I've never hurt a patient. You'll be okay. You can come see me. He said, no, no, I'm not afraid of you adjusting me. He said, I'm afraid of what you're going to tell me, that I'm going to have to change my lifestyle. I said, well, what are your goals? You want to get well? He says, yeah, I want to get well. He has a family, he has children. I said, well, if that's your goal, don't worry. I'm not going to pick on you. I'm just going to advise you. And let's take a little step here, a little step there, and let's work toward getting well. And inevitably, when a patient does what I tell them to do, or we tell them to do, my team of doctors, we all work together, they come back and they say, you know, Dr. Joe, 
I regret I didn't do this sooner. That was not hard at all. It was cheaper than anything I'm doing. I feel great, more energy, going to the bathroom better, love life improved. Pain is getting better most of the time. I mean, I can't help every patient, but there's a major, major majority of patients. And it's not that hard. It's just different. Anybody ever drive a, a stick shift? First car I ever had was a Ford van. Customized, mural on the side, mag wheels, fur interior. Uh, I was cool, man, back in high school. And it was a three-speed on the column. And I remember the first time I went up a hill with a three-speed on a column shift, and I thought, I'm, I'm going to live here. I'm going to put it on, put on the emergency brake, put it in park, and I'm going to live here forever because I have no way I'm going to make it up this hill. And you go jerking back and forth. And eventually now, then I became a truck driver, and I was driving, to, 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 was it 10, 12 gears, whatever it was, and it was no big deal. So you have to take the first step to take the second step to take the third step. And that's why these shows are so valuable. And if you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, we archive hundreds of hours of radio shows. And you could listen one, you could listen to 100, you could listen to 1,000. It's my gift to you. It's my podcasts. So people t download them when they travel. People use it when they work out. Because slowly but surely, you're going to listen to one show and another show and another show. And then every time you listen, something else is going to click in your brain. And you're going to say, I could do that. I could do that. I could do that. And then you're finally going to get to the point where you're, you're kind of rolling. And the first step, people say, what's the first step, Dr. Joe? What would you recommend? I would recommend first step taking something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. There are two powders. Um, they taste great. The, the Essential Source is about the equivalent of about 10 servings of raw fruits and vegetables, prebiotics, probiotics, digestive enzymes, and it's a complete multivitamin. So if nothing else, take the Super Greens, the Essential Source, scoop of each. I put it in a, a glass jar, shake it up with some coconut milk or almond milk, and I drink it at least once a day. And I suggest you do that too. Relatively inexpensive. If you're taking the Super Greens and the Essential Source, it's about, I don't know, probably $2.50 a day. Now, one of the benefits of it is not only do you, most people feel better and get a lot of nutrients in their body, but most people report that they're less hungry. And I had a guy come to me the other day and he high fives me. And I said, what was that all about? He says, Doc, you're saving me a ton of money. I said, how am I doing that? He says, I'm taking you Super Greens, your essential source. I'm eating less and I'm spending less money on the Super Greens essential source than I do on the food. He said, so I'm making money every time I take the product. He says, I just want to thank you. This is awesome. He says, I feel great. I have more energy. Everything you said is true and I'm saving money. So most people can't afford not to take the products because of, of, of that. So and if you need more information on that, that's on my website, drjoesposito.com. Also on Amazon, if you have an Amazon account. Uh, we also have uh, Dr. Joe's Seasonal Booster. Um, and we have uh, one thing that I take. It's for cold. If I have a cold or flu coming on, it's wheatgrass, bottle, it's ginger, horseradish, cayenne pepper, onion, and garlic. Taste awful. But that helps um, when, I have a, when I have cold and flu symptoms. And then I also take an immune-type product that keeps my immune system strong throughout the winter. And those are both on the website as well, drjoesposito.com. You can just Google Dr. Joe. They're there. But we ran out. Unfortunately, the guy who made it died on us a couple of years ago. And we ran out for a season. Oh, my gosh. People were calling, yelling, where is it? This stuff's amazing. Why don't you have it? What can I do? Is there any other place I can get it? So we finally found another manufacturer because this guy was kind of manufacturing for us. He, did, he had a very small business. Um, who can make it now, and it's back in, back on, back in order. So if you missed it for a year or two, it's back there. And you can go to the website, drjoesposito.com, and pick it up there. A um, lot, more, lot more things we need to talk about. We need to talk about mercury, flame retardant, nonstick pans, uh, bisphenol A. we got so much to talk about. Um, but as usual, triclosane, it's in a – I'll jump ahead with triclosane real quick uh, before I have to go to the break. Um Triclosane is in uh, the hands, uh, hand sanitizers. Triclosane is known endocrine disruptor. It messes with your hormones. So I, this drives me nuts when I see kids. Now they carry these little uh, packs on their backpacks of hand sanitizer and it has triclosane in it. You're messing with their little hormones. Why would you do that? I'll get to that a little later. Now, folks, if you want to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoesposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. <clears throat> Stop suffering needlessly. Stop going through life, going, my back hurts, my neck hurts, i got headaches, I've been hurt in a car accident, a sports injury. It's debilitating. I did a big show a couple of weeks ago on the opioid crisis. 
what happens is no one's talking about, well, now finally they are. It's a new law that get to the cause of the problem. Treat the cause, not just treat the symptoms. But for years, we never had that. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you're ready to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. You can call us, do it online. We accept all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, folks. We want to help you get well and help you stay well. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe here. Hope everybody's having a great day. We're talking today about toxic chemicals that you find in your household items and in your personal care products. And it's the reason I'm doing this, it's kind of dishonest uh, labeling because it's not a lie. They list it as what it is. But, for example, if you saw the word thimerosal, would you know what thimerosal is? Some people would, some people wouldn't. And what it is is mercury. And so if you see the words thimerosal somewhere, that can be uh, an issue that you don't want to put in your body. So let's talk about mercury. It's found in things like mascara, uh, the CFL light bulbs, and even some seafood. Now, it's not, of course, put in seafood, but I'll tell you how it gets there. Very interesting how sea- why seafood is high in mercury. Because, again, a lot of people say seafood's high in mercury, but that no one knows why it's high in mercury. That's what we're going to talk about. Okay. So why is mercury a problem? It's a preservative. Uh, it prevents bacterial growth. So that's something that is, it's used for. Many times in vaccines, for example, they'll use mercury as a, as a preservative. But mercury is a known neurotoxin. What that means is that can cause allergic reactions or skin irritation. It's easily absorbed through your skin and accumulates in your body. Now, I don't know how old you folks are, but when I was a kid, I remember playing with mercury. It was in thermometers. It was in thermostats because it would expand and contract and kind of monitor the thermostat. And if we had it, it broke open, we'd play with it. You'd roll around on your hands and everything. Little did we know how toxic this stuff was. And in fact, now, if there's ever a leak, a merc- like let's assume, let's assume you break an old thermometer, technically, you're supposed to call poison control, get people in hazmat suits, shut down the unit, whatever it is, the building, and clean up the mercury. That's how dangerous it is. And yet, we still find it in some fillings. You may have mercury in your teeth. We find it in seafood. We find it in vaccines. Kind of weird. I'm not quite sure why it's not all gone yet. And so as a result, one of the, one of the few cosmetic ingredients that the FDA does not restrict, mercury, uh, uh, does restrict, I'm sorry, uh, mercury can be used in eye makeup in very small amounts and only if other safe and effective preservatives cannot be found. So it's out there, folks, and it may be in your mascara. Again, it is under control by the FDA, but it's still allowed to be used, which makes no sense to me. Again, as a manufacturer, they say, well, there's nothing else we can use that's safe, that's effective. All right, you can use mercury. Well, I don't know. If I was the grand poobah of the universe, I would say no to that. So where do we get it from? A lot of people get it from eating fish, car exhaust, because when you burn petroleum products like gasoline, mercury can be put in the air. And that's how it gets into the fish. So in Asia, there's a lot of coal-burning plants. And when the smoke gets into the air, there's mercury in it, the smoke goes out over the ocean, settles down in the ocean, and it, be, it gets into the food chain. The bacteria eat it, and it works its way up the food chain. So it's a slow process, but it's a constant process. And so the smaller the fish, the less likely you are to get a lot of mercury. The bigger the fish, the higher the amount of mercury. So if you're going to eat something like uh, fatty fish, like sardines or anchovies, they're really small, they're low on the food chain, chances are they're not going to have a lot of mercury. Eat a big fish, which has been around for a long time, like a tuna, for example, chances are you're going to get a higher amount of mercury. And in fact, in California, if I, I read this a while ago, I'm assuming it's still the law, I don't know this, it says they have warning labels on tuna fish cans for pregnant women. Now, if it's not safe for pregnant women and for fetuses, why is it safe for you? Well, it's not. So mercury is a highly toxic poison. In fact, in our offices, we do a lot of hair analysis. We'll do a hair analysis on patients to see if they have built up mercury or aluminum or other heavy metals, see if they have any nutritional mineral deficiencies. And that's part of our plan. We, we usually do a, a generalized custom nutrition plan for our patients. But I know I was at a party the other day, and this gal came up to me. We started talking, and... Long story short, she told me she has Hashimoto syndrome. And I said, well, not all Hashimoto syndromes, but sometimes the immune system is just going crazy. It's attacking the body itself. It's an autoimmune condition. 
And one of the things that can cause autoimmune conditions, all autoimmune conditions, is a mercury toxicity. Mercury builds up in the body, and the immune system starts attacking the mercury. Well, imagine these bunch of soldiers, these white blood cells, attacking the mercury, but it can't kill it because it's not a virus, germ, or bacteria. It's not alive, so it can't kill it. So what happens is the body produces more of these soldiers and more of these soldiers, and the immune system just goes wacky. The immune system gets hypersensitized. And then it starts attacking things that are healthy, like your, like your thyroid gland or your joints with rheumatoid arthritis. So one of the things I tell people with autoimmune conditions is we definitely want to do a, a, a hair analysis at least. We may do a food analysis as well. We can do that here too. And determine if they have this heavy metal, we need to get them on a heavy metal detox. We need to get the heavy metals out of their system because that could be the cause of the problem. Either way, whether it's a cause or not, we want to get the heavy metals out of the system. There is zero benefit to having mercury and lead, cadmium in your body, aluminum. It has no benefit. So if it's in there, we want to try to get it out, which can help calm down the immune systems. With light bulbs, shoot for the LED light bulbs. Avoid mercury, uh, avoid makeup that lists mercury or thimerosal. That's why I said thimerosal as one of the ingredients. So read your ingredients. You see thimerosal, do not buy it. Do not use it. Do not put it in your house. It's a highly toxic poison. So again, a little sneaky. Instead of calling it mercury, to call it thimerosal, and you go, okay. And I'm going to get the natural ingredients. I, I kind of gave you a tease a little bit about that. I should have time to get to that. Let me look through my notes here. Uh, hopefully I can get to it. Let's see. Where is it? Where's the one that I like so much? All right, I'll try to get to it. Uh, be, uh, beaver anal gland excretion. Sometimes listed as natural flavoring. Why would that be in your food? Flame retardants and nonstick chemicals. PFCs. Perflor perfluorinated compounds and brominated uh, fire retardants are things that are put in the body. Now, bromine, it's used as a fire retardant. So if you spray it on your clothes, spray it on children's uh, onesies, little babies, it may have a lot of bromine in it. Bromine can be absorbed into the body and it looks like iodine. It's called a haloid. So when you put a haloid in the body, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, and iodine, the thyroid glands wants to suck it up because the thyroid glands love iodine. You need iodine for your thyroid function. And if it's, it doesn't have enough iodine, it might suck up this bromine and actually clog up your thyroid gland, preventing you from absorbing iodine. And so now the thyroid can start to get bigger because it's not absorbing enough iodine, trying to become bigger and do its job more efficiently. And that creates a goiter. That's why iodine deficiency causes a goiter, which is a big inflamed thyroid in your throat. And so what happens then is we, what do we do? We give people iodine for it. But if you're taking bromine, fluorine, chlorine into your body, you may be blocking up your iodine receptor sites and it doesn't work. That's why I'm not a fan of a lot of these, of these brominated flame retardants. Where else might you find these chemicals? How about nonstick cookware? Other chemicals that are bad. Nonstick cookware. Stain-resistant fabric, foam cushions, mattresses, carpeting, paints, pizza boxes, fast food containers, conventional cleaning products, roof treatments, kids' pajamas. Why would we put these toxic chemicals in something like kids' pajamas, pizza boxes? They're non-stick. I don't know if you remember a long time ago, but if you bought a pizza and the pizza touched the box, it stuck really bad. Now it slides right off. You buy uh, food that's wrapped up, sandwiches or something, wrapped in these, these, these like not quite paper, kind of plasticky wraps. These are nonstick components. And if they leach into your food, they can cause some real serious problems. They are chemicals that make things, uh, it's a group of chemicals that make things stain, water, and fire resistant. So anything that's fire, water, or stain resistant, chances are has these chemicals on it. They're endocrine disruptors. Once again, they mess with your hormones and they can lead to reproductive and developmental disorders. They're also associated with certain types of cancer. Wow. So if you have nonstick cookware, I strongly advise you get rid of it. Ceramic is probably okay. The research so far looks like ceramic is safe. Glass is always safe. Uh, cast iron, probably safe. Uh, glass is always going to be your best bet, of course. Uh, stainless steel is probably going to be okay. But if you have the old nonstick cookware that scratches in it, throw it away. Don't give it away. Throw it away. Skip your fast food and take out boxes and wraps. What does that mean, Dr. Joe? That means you should learn how to prepare food that isn't from a restaurant. 
You mean I have to cook? Yes. Yes, at least prepare food. And a nice part is that 33 years ago when I went vegan, it was salads pretty much. That's what vegans ate. Now there's so many alternatives. There's frozen dinners and there's uh, prepackaged salads and there's uh, uh, substitutes for just about everything. Butter substitutes, mayonnaise substitutes. So it's a lot easier than it used to be to eat a plant-based diet and not have these nonstick chemicals and flame retardants in your food. So what you can do is you can, uh, if nothing else, get my first book. My first book is called Eating Right for the Health of It. And the first half of the book tells you how to change your diet. And the second half of the book is over 200 recipes and meal plans. So if you don't know what to do, it's all there. If you go to my website, drjoesposito.com, sign up for my newsletter. It's right on the front. Give me your email address. I'm never going to give it out to anyone. I will send you a link to a lecture I did called, So What Can I Eat? And there we talk about what you can eat. Because I want you to, because people say, I'll do what you say, Dr. Joe. I just don't know how to do it. So I'm going to give you that opportunity as well. So I'm looking through my notes. I want to find the one I promised you because I don't want to run out of time. Uh, where is it? Well, I'll just tell you about it. Um, they use beaver, beaver anal gland secretions. thought I had it in here. Oh, well. Beaver anal gland secretions are used to flavor many times vanilla and raspberry flavored products. Now, it's listed oftentimes as natural flavors. Now, who the first person is that found this beaver beaver anal gland secretion and said, ooh, I'm going to use this as vanilla and raspberry flavorings, I don't know. I don't have that research on that. However, it's real. And so if I would try to do organic, well, I try to do organic anyway, but especially if something is vanilla or um, raspberry flavored, you just got to be careful with that because... Personally, I try to limit the amount of beaver, beaver anal gland secretions I put in my diet on a daily basis. And hopefully you do too. Just one of those fun foods I thought you'd know about. Bisphenol A, another chemical that's found in your foods. They're found in pacifiers, some baby toys, any plastic labeled number seven. You ever look on the bottom of plastic or anything that has a little pound sign, the number, and it has numbers after it? Anything with the number seven. Seven is not lucky when it comes to plastics. Cash register receipts. The lining of cans. Most canned foods line their cans with bisphenol A. And years ago, if you had something in a can, you had to scrape the can. I remember scraping things out of the can. And now it just slides right out because of bisphenol A. It's a non-stick chemical. It's also used on receipts, cash register receipts. Most of the bisphenol A you get in your body is going to be from canned foods. But if you can avoid taking a cash register receipt, absolutely avoid it. Now they email receipts, much easier choice. Because I don't want you touching that paper. And then also dollars. Money. Money's filthy. If you ever touch money, wash your hands, folks, every time. Because many times somebody will put their wallet with their money and their cash register receipts together, the bisphenol they'll get onto the money. Again, not a big deal. The canned food is a lot worse. So bisphenol is a plasticizer, and it makes polycarbonate plastic clear and hard, and it's used as a a non-stick in cans. Now, BPA, again, is an endocrine disruptor. That can be associated with infertility, obesity, metabolic disorders, thyroid problems, and even low birth weight. So babies being born, it could be because mommies are exposing themselves to things. So avoid fast food and canned goods. Say no thank you to receipts, cash register receipts. Avoid microwaving in plastic. Because when you microwave in plastic, that plastic is then released into the food, and that's not good either. Cut back on your bottled water, especially if it has a number seven on it. I have stainless steel containers and glass bottles that I use that I drink out of, and I think you should too. And I have a filter. I have a whole house filter in my house. It's about five, six feet tall, and it filters all the water in my house. It's expensive, but it's worth it. At least we have water filters on my website, drjoesposito.com. At least do that. Give your body the nutrients that it needs so that the body can detoxify a lot of these chemicals we're talking about. Because when you put it in, the body has ways to go send it to the liver, break it down, make it harmless, and pass it out. But your body can't run unless you give it the raw materials to run. For some reason, we think that we can't we can put good gas in our car and make sure it's run and change the oil, but our bodies, we can dump any type of junk in there and expect it to run. It's gonna crash. So minimum, take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're on my website, drjoesposito.com, also on Amazon if you have an Amazon account. Relatively inexpensive, about dollar two fifty dollar for one, two fifty for both, maybe a day for servings. 
And I tell you what, most people just love it. And if you've never taken a really high-quality supplement, you might have bought the cheap stuff from the grocery store. It didn't work. This is a super high-quality supplement. They're on the website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Everybody should be taking it, I feel, every day. And there are certain restrictions. If you go to the website, we talk about that. So, folks, at least do that. If you're not going to do anything else, give your body the raw materials to get the liver healthy so you can break down some of these toxins that you're going to expose to anyway. You just can't avoid it. Now, if you want to make an appointment to come see us for chiropractic care, for nutrition evaluations, if you have acid reflux, heartburn, maybe we can help you with that. If you want to get well, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world, and we will set you up an appointment. You can do it right online or call us. We accept all patients, patients with insurance, without insurance, car accidents. Folks, please, if you've been in a car accident, get on the email, get on the web right now and set up an appointment, whether it was yesterday or 50 years ago. Because if the car was damaged, you were damaged. You need to get treated right away. And that's one of the things they teach now is the insurance companies, one of their little scams that they do is they say, well, you didn't go to the doctor fast enough, so we're not going to pay you. Well, I was in the hospital. Well, I, I don't know. My, my, my father died. I had that case not long ago. Patient's father died. She went to the funeral, came back, and the insurance company said, well, that was too long a gap between uh, accident and treatment, so we're not going to pay you. Now, she fought it and she won, but don't even just play the game. I've, I've decided don't even argue with insurance companies anymore. Do what they want. Solve the problem. So go to the website right now. Make an appointment, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. Stop suffering needlessly. Every day, patients come in. They say, I've been meaning to come to you for two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years. What took you so long? I don't know. And the problems just get worse as time goes on. So stop suffering. Stop letting your problem get worse. DrJoeEsposito.com or just Google Dr. Joe. We will set you up as soon as possible. So more things that are uh, sneaky ingredients that are in food that might be making you sick. Antibiotics. Antibiotics are mostly found in, well, they're found everywhere, but a lot of commercially raised animals, uh, cattle, hogs, sheep, poultry. Now, it's interesting because a lot of companies now are going to organic animals. They're raising their animals organically, which means they can't use antibiotics. But the tricky part is this. Even eggs or chickens, organic starts the day after they're born, which means even if something says organic, they may be injected into the shell in eggs. They can inject the shell with antibiotics. And then day two, they say, oh, from here on out, they're going to be organic. I don't eat meat. I don't eat animal products. Whatever you decide to do is up to you. I'm not going to beat you over the head with my philosophies and my understandings. But I can tell you this. If you knew what I knew, you would do what I do. I don't have a choice in the lifestyle that I'm living right now. I don't have a choice because I know so much. And so I have to I get regular chiropractic care. Why? Spine and nervous system control everything. And all day, every day, we mess ourselves up. I, I fell asleep the other day on two pillows instead of my usual good pillow. Woke up the next day, my neck was sore. I had a headache. So what did I do? I came right in and grabbed one of my doctors. I say, Dr. Gale, work on my neck. Dr. Irwin worked on me that day too. And it put the bones back in place. So it's not just about pain. It's about the nerves also control organs. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. They control organs. So you can have a pinched nerve going to an organ and not know it. And that can cause problems. So again, I don't eat animal products. Back to that thought. Because I know what's in animal products. So if you're going to do animal products, please at least do organic. And that's why a lot of companies now, uh, what was it? Was it? Did I hear this? I, I just heard it on the news, and I don't know if it was true, but one of the big turkey companies, I won't say their name in case it's not true, the one you associate with turkeys, just went organic. They said, oh, we didn't promote it too much because we thought we'd sell out if everybody knew we were organic and we were not run out of product. So that's the demand. They realize that there's money in taking care of people and stop poisoning them. So that's a good, I don't care what the motivation is. I don't care how you get here, just get here. So antibiotics are found in a lot of animal products. So a lot of the drugs that are formulated to kill microorganisms are fed to livestock. They also speed the growth of the animal. So the animals get bigger and they can prevent diseases, particularly because animals live in these confined spaces and are more susceptible to getting diseases. Now the practice of routinely feeding these drugs to animals contributes to a growing problem and it's called antibiotic-resistant bacteria, which you definitely want to avoid. Because if you get antibiotic-resistant bacteria in your body, that can cause some real serious problems because the drugs aren't working on it. And that's why a lot of doctors are going toward the old-fashioned way of treating 
uh, infections. And in fact, one of the chicken commercials I just saw, they said, we don't give our chickens antibiotics. We give them oregano oil. Oregano oil is a natural antibiotic. Garlic is a natural antibiotic. So there's a lot of natural things that can help stimulate the immune system. In fact, there's a product on my website now that I use. Uh, it's a little tincture bottle. And I use that to stimulate my immune system every day, especially in the winter, to keep my immune system strong. And it's a sumer root olive leaf extract, uh, which helps stimulate my immune system and fight off the viruses, germs, and bacteria. So that's something that I do. It's on my website if you want more information. I, I like the taste, first of all, and it works really well. I said earlier, we ran out of it for about a year. And my gosh, people, every day people calling about it. Whatever happened to that thing for the immune system? What happened to that thing you take when you get a cold? The, the, the wheatgrass, the, I'm sorry, the ginger, horseradish, cayenne, pepper, onion, and garlic. And so we finally got it back uh, and it's on the website, drjoesposito.com. So these are a lot of little chemicals and little sneaky things that get into your food that can cause problems. Formaldehyde is an issue. Formaldehyde is used in shampoos, body washes, nail polishes, uh, poly, nail polish removers, keratin hair straighteners, hair gels, eyelash glues, as well as kitchen cabinets. If you use pressed wood, many times it has formaldehyde. Another source of formaldehyde is artificial sweetener, aspartame specifically. Aspartame breaks down to three components, aspartic acid, phenylalanine, and methyl esters. Again, don't worry about the, the chemistry here. Methyl esters becomes methanol. Methanol breaks down into formaldehyde. So if you're doing artificial sweeteners, you're putting very low doses of formaldehyde into your body. That is preserve. It's a preservative. It's sometimes a byproduct released by preservatives, like we just talked about. Prevents the growth of bacteria and weirdly makes your hair silky smooth. That's why they put it in a lot of conditioners. The problem is when it gets into the body, it can cause some real serious problems. It can cause... Uh, th can, related to things like cancer, long-term exposure can lead to things like allergic reactions, rashes, nosebleeds, asthma, respiratory problems. You might think you have trouble breathing and you have asthma. You give up your artificial sweeteners, your aspartame products, and it's in over six, I think six or 8,000 products now, and suddenly you're breathing better. You are having a reaction to that small dose of formaldehyde. So what do we do? Just get it out of your diet is what you need to do. And those are things that you can avoid, not, not some things you can't. Mold is a big issue. A friend of mine lives on a lake, and a lot of people along the lake have died. I've known this person for about three years now, four years, and a lot of people have died living on the lake. Young people. And it just seems strange, but every time I go into one of the houses on the lake, it smells like mold. It has that musty smell to it. Now, is there a correlation? I have no idea. However, is it a good idea to check a house for mold, get it tested, and if it is there, treat it? Absolutely yes. So these tiny spores require only moisture and oxygen to grow. They don't need like a, a food source. Mold infestation can trigger things like asthma, allergies, and in more concentrated doses, dizziness, flu-like symptoms, and ultimately can lead to other serious problems too. So if you have something that smells musty and moldy, I want you to get it checked. There are companies you can call up, and they'll check to see if there's mold. And if there is, they do what's called remediation. They get it out of the system. So you got to be careful to get that stuff out of the body, out of your life, and it can be fixed. Cost you a couple of bucks. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Sodium nitrites, hot dogs, bacon, cured meats, smoked fish. It's a meat preservative. Uh, meat preservative. It can trigger migraines. It's been linked to cancer. You want to avoid smoked and cured meats. And if you do indulge, make sure they're nitrate-free because it's a sneaky little thing that they put in there. And nitrates can be good. There are certain nitrates that are actually good for you, things like a beet powder. Red beets have nitrates in it. When they get in your body, convert into nitric oxide. Arugula, very high in nitrates, which converts into nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels to your brain, your heart, your muscles, your reproductive organs, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. So that's a good thing. When you heat them around proteins... It creates nitrosamines, amines meaning amino acids or proteins. Nitrosamines are carcinogenic. So if you're going to eat smoked meat, good golly, don't ever grill it or brown it because it's going to cause some real serious problems. So those are just a few of the chemicals that you can avoid every single day. And if you miss some of this, I know it was a lot of it, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and you could listen to this and hundreds of hours of archive radio shows. You can also order Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, the things I take for cold when I have an immune issue, uh, Dr. Joe's Intestinal Cleanser to get the bowels moving, all on the website, 24 hours a day, drjoesposito.com. 
If you have questions, send them to me through the website as well, drjoesposito.com. If you want to make an appointment, and you should, folks, stop suffering needlessly. Neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, so many health problems are easily fixed when you fix the nervous system, the digestive system, and the diet. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe in the world. We will set you up a time. We accept people with all insurances, no insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. I can't get this in your head enough. Stop suffering needlessly. Start getting healthy. Again, the website, drjoesposito.com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com.